and demoniac natures. So there's 24 verses and we hope to go through all 24 verses. We may not be able to read each verse but we will try our best to read some of the verses and we'll try to complete it uh, in the one session. That's our goal. So, so the connection between 15 and 16, for the 15th chapter Krishna had just spoken, it describes the banyan tree of the material world and how the modes of material nature nourish both the upper, the auspicious divine branches of the tree and the lower branches of the tree, the meaning the demoniac branches. So the extra roots of the banyan tree were also compared to the activities of the living entities. Some are auspicious and some are inauspicious. So therefore chapter 16 explained the divine qualities that elevate one to the tree and leads ultimately to liberation. And it also explained the demonic qualities and the mentality which drives one lower on the tree and ultimately to hell. So it's explaining. That's what we're going to be discussing. So I'll give a quick breakdown of chapter 16. There's only three sections. One, two, three section. The first section is dealing with transcendental and demonic qualities. That is like the first six verses. One to six. Mm -hmm. Is dealing with those qualities only. And we'll see it as we move on. And from seven to twenty, it's de describing the demonic nature, all the demonic qualities, the mentality, tendencies, and what happened to demons, they go into abom abominable species of life. That is from 7 to 20. And then the last few verses, section 3, deals with the choice, you have a choice, escaping to the supreme destination. Now that's the choice. He talks about the three gates leading to the soul, degradation, meaning to demonic species and those qualities like last time he had greed. And then he talks about how a sane man should give this up to go to the supreme destination. And therefore, it's important for one to follow the scriptures and escape this hellish place. It's a quick <coughs> overview on all the chapters, right? So just follow very carefully and you have questions you can ask. Like one to six now we're going to deal with, uh, you know, the, the theme is, you know, Krishna lists the uh, characteristics of saintly persons, uh, qualities that elevate us, as I said, onto the banyan tree and ultimately to liberation. So therefore this text is quite long. Uh, there's three texts in one. I'll just read the text quickly. The Supreme Personality of God had said, fearlessness, purification of one's existence, cultivation of spiritual knowledge, charity, self-control, performance of sacrifice, study of the Vedas, austerity, simplicity, non-violence, truthfulness, freedom from anger, renunciation, tranquility, aversion to fall finally, compassion for all living entities, freedom from covetousness, gentleness, modesty, steady determination, vigor, forgiveness, fortitude, cleanliness, and freedom from envy and from the passion for honor. These transcendental qualities of Son of God belong to godly men endowed with the divine nature. So this is quite interesting. It's talking about we spoke about the connections between the two chapters from 15 and 16 and yet it, it, it speaks about how the how these qualities either demoniac and divine natures develop so it develops by the association of particular modes these demonic qualities develop from the mode of passion and ignorance and those activities in the mode of passion and ignorance for those people who are in the levels of nature, they have no possibility of liberation. 
and, and what is their destiny? The either either one stays as, as a human in the material world, or he descends to lower forms of to animal species. One of the two going to happen. So, and the divine qualities you develop the mode of goodness, and we spoke last time about the mode of goodness. Because it's important to your, your activities to be in the mode of goodness, because such activities are called like Devi Prakriti. Devi Prakriti means it's transcendental by nature. Transcendental. And they are considered auspicious on the progress to the path of liberation. So those are divine qualities. And here there's like 26 qualities. They are, they are transcendental quality that they explain here. Then it talks about an important word in the, in, if you look the word for word, the last, the second last word in the Sanskrit, word for word, abhijatasya, of one who is born of. Uh, so one who is born of transcendental qualities or godly tendencies. And this is quite important because this takes place at the time of conception. Therefore, the scriptures recommend a samskar before you have union with your wife to make it a godly to beget a godly child. You have to do this garbadan samskar. Then you'll have a child of good qualities, and one should follow you know the principles for social life of a human being. Then also it mentioned that Krishna. In the seventh chapter, text 11, he says, I am sex life which is not contrary to religious principle. <clears throat> so then, what is the basis of cultivating quality? So, the, you know, you know, depending where you are situated in the social or occupational order, but one can develop by practice. Even, you know, despite the material condition, <coughs> you have these demonic qualities, but gradually you can rise up to the topmost transcendental platform. It's not that, you know, you can re you remain there. So what are the symptoms of a, di of a divine person personality? He leads a regulated life according to the injunctions of the scriptures. He leads a, he leads a very uh, regulated life. Therefore, your life must be regulated. Try as far as possible to regulate your eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. Then he talks about the Varnashram system, how we divide, not meant to divide society according to birth, but according to qualities. Because people is born in Brahman family, maybe like a sutra. Mm -hmm. So, and the only basis is their qualification, guna and karma. What mode? Purpose to keep, what is the purpose of this Varnashram system or the Dharma? It should keep society in peace and prosperity for them to be happy. And the sannyasi is like the head of all, is the head of the spiritual master of all statuses and orders, including Brahman. So the sannyasi is on the top. And a Brahman is the spiritual master of the other three social orders. Like that. So this is explained in the first three verses. But now we will go quickly into those into those qualities, those divine qualities. Now the quality will go into three sections: the varna and ashram, and I will comment on it. Mm -hmm. See, the first one is abhaya. You see that word for word? You look at that your word for word. Abhaya. It means the first qualification for a sannyasi. This, this varna or ashram the person is in, this is talking about a sannyasi. <clears throat> he has completely, complete dependence on the Supreme Lord's mercy. He has to live alone without guarantee or support. And he's convinced that the Paramatma will give protection to the mm -hmm. surrendered. So that is the category. That quality mainly you'll find in a sannyasi. Then you look at the next one, purification of one's existence. You can look in your book. Sattva samsiddhi. That is also applicable to sannyasi. 
strictly following rules and regulations, especially for women to intimate association with women. Example, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was very strict and uh, he punished one of his followers, Chota Haridas. So he's very strict. It's all here in the Buddha, we're breaking it down. Mm -hmm. right? Easier, huh? Yes. Now the cultivation of knowledge, jnana, yoga, we are vastiti. This is also a sannyasi, the duty of a sannyasi. He must cultivate and give transcendental knowledge, especially to householders. And he has humility, he begs from door to door to awaken Krishna consciousness for others. That is the function of a sannyasi. Now we're going to move to charity. Now charity, I guess the so we just, we just started. Charity is is, is, the, is the function of a grihastha. Now we move to the next order. So grihastha means he has to give in the mode of goodness at the right time, the right place, and to a particular person. He spent 50 of 50% 50 of his income to propagate Krishna consciousness. But there's also charity in passion and ignorance is a waste of time. So that's charity. Then the next quality, which is a divine quality, is self-control. Now this self-control dharma is especially for all grihastas. And that control is talking about sex life. It only should be used for the propagating of Krishna conscious children. That's what he's supposed to be doing. Then sacrifice. Grihastas require material resources. Is that as what? Yagyas. Like they require Agni Hotra, Yagya. This is for householders. But the best yagya, which is most inexpensive, and anyone can do it, and you get the highest benefit is the Sankirtan. You get it? Instead of being fire sacrifice. Then Vedic study. Vedic study, you'll see, you can see in your in your in your you're following that qualities, right? In your Bhagavad Gita. So this is mainly for brahmacharis, student life. Because students, in a recommendation for brahmachari, they must be celibate, they must engage their mind in deep study of the literature. That is for brahmachari. Austerity, all, especially, all, but especially vanaprast. Because this human life is meant for liberation, to perform some tapasya. You should retire from household life when you reach 50 years of age. That's what is recommended here. Yeah. But people work till 60 and 70. Some people even work till they die. So austerity can be of the body, mind, and tongue. And here also it refutes show bottle spiritualists. Show bottle spiritual who says that there is no need for austerity in life and one can go on speculating. So such philosophy attracts many followers. Therefore you get many people doing many different things now. Then he talks the ninth quality, he talks about simplicity. That's applicable to all. You must be simple and you must be straightforward. How that sounds? <laughs> very interesting, huh? Eh? Yeah. It is very interesting. Non-violence, ahimsa, it's applicable to all. And non-violence implies not checking progressive life of a living entity. Meaning, you are not killing animals. When you kill an animal, you're checking his time duration. Then he talks about freedom from, uh, uh, I mean, no, sorry, truthfulness, satya. It's applicable to all. You should not distort the truth for some personal interest, especially the Vedic literature. Example, mis, mis, misinterpreting Bhagavad Gita commentaries to suit yourself. You know, one must hear from authority. That is the process of understanding the Vedic literature. I was just talking about the temple this afternoon. So freedom from anger, akroda, all. So freedom from anger, that's very difficult to control. Even if there's some provocation, one should be tolerant. See, anger pollutes the whole body. You know when you get angry, how you are like? Mm -hmm. you, you can kill somebody. But anger is a product of passion and lust. Do you want to be in this place? When you get angry, you must remember this is where you are. Mm -hmm. And we all do get angry, but we have to control ourselves. And renunciation is applicable to all, using everything Whatever you have properly in Krishna service, that's renunciation. Then he talks about tra tranquility. It, it applies to all of us. Unaffected by disturbing emotions, 
peaceful at equipoise. You're not disturbed by what's going on. You're very peaceful, you're very balanced. And your aversion to fault finding. And that's applicable to all. You know, to call a thief, a thief is okay. But no unnecessary fault finding or correction. You have to like, be very cautious how you correct people also. There's some etiquette in all that. Right? Aversion to fault finding. That's a divine quality. Then compassion for all living entities. You know, give spiritual knowledge, prasada, books, holy name. Compassionate, just giving the holy name. Uh, then freedom from covetousness. I mean like possessing, you know, possessiveness. All, it's a principle to all. Greedy. You know, like you want, you want things for yourself. That's not a good quality. You must be able to give, you know, give out, give things. And you overcome that by charity and renunciation. You, you can overcome these things. So see, these are very divine, divine qualities. When you, as you gain through it, you might find that a lot of things we're not following yet. Mm. Isn't it? Mm. Like gentleness. Mm. That's applicable to everybody on the planet. Friendliness to all the entities. Modesty. All. Do not perform abominable action and be very modest. You have to be steady in determination. Mm. That applies to all of us. We should be steady in our practice, not agitated or frustrated uh, in his efforts, regardless of failure. And you progress with patience and determination. Then you've got vigor. Vigor now is like tejas, you know, like some power. You're able to give protection to those who need it. Now this is applicable to Ashatya. You see how this different quality applicable to different people. The Brahmins, the Brahmin, the Sanyasi, the Adriyastra, the Kshatriyas. And forgiveness, all, especially Kshatriyas. See, forgive minor offenses of others. Do we do that? We have a problem with that. It's minor thing, you make it a big thing. And so when, when one is able to curb down his enemies, he may under certain conditions show forgiveness. He will start showing forgiveness. Fortitude, ditti. All especially Kshatriyas, the mental and emotional strength when facing, facing difficult situations. This is fortitude. Cleanliness, that's applicable to all, but especially Vaishyas, like farming community. So internal, your mind and heart, and external body and dealing with others because you deal, it's business. You are meeting other people. So you have to have you know, a level of cleanliness. Your mind must be clean. Uh, and dealing with others have to be very nice. No black market or underhanded dealing. So this person is a divine person. Get it? If somebody tells you, well, I'd, you know, I've got uh, $50,000. Do you want to give me an answer for it? You know, you start doing money laundering, you know, exchange on the side. And that person takes the money, and when the market is up, he exchanges dollars and he gets more money. So that type of thing is not recommended. And freedom from envy is applicable to all of us. Not resentful of others, of another person. This is envy, freedom. You must be free. That is a divine quality. And then the, uh, lastly, freedom from the passion for honor. And that's difficult. It's all especially sutra. You must respect others. One should not be puffed up with unnecessary prestige and honor, but remain in one's own status. So we broke down the whole, all that what you're reading in these categories. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Yes. Clear, right? Yes. So then, we're moving on to the fourth of us. So we're going to finish this chapter. The fourth of us, pride, arrogance, conceit, anger, harshness, and ignorance, all these belong to those of the demoniac nature or son of Krita. So it's a short purport, and then we we are we are commenting on the word avijatasya, the importance of that word. And in the last three lines of that paragraph, the purport, he's saying that these qualities are taken by on them from the beginning of their bodies in the wombs of their mothers. These qualities: pride, arrogance, conceit, anger, and harshness. And as they grow, 
they manifest these qualities. So it's right from birth the six starts. Get it? So it's very important to note that. Like once we were doing a program at my, where I worked before, Bhakti Tita Swami, and there were lots of people, but there was one principle, all of them. You know, academics were there. But the one principle, in the end, she went in the front and she said, you know, all what this person is saying, right, he was speaking on this point, he reckoned how people cannot change because this is right from birth. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it's so difficult. That's why they have these bad qualities. She said it, it's recorded. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they grow. So there's demonic qualities, pride. Demonic, want to show, want to make a show of religion and advancement in spiritual side. But they do not follow principles. They're arrogant, they're proud in possessing some education or wealth. And arrogant, these are bad qualities. These are demonic qualities. Conceit, desire to be worshipped by others. You're demanding respect from others. But do not command respect. And oh, you and Hare Krishna. Okay. No, and, 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 and you get angry over little things make you angry. Over trifles you become angry. And harshness, you speak very harshly. Ignorance, you know, not knowing what to do and what not to do. You do all things whimsically, you know, to, the, to your own desires. And you do not recognize the authority. So that, these qualities belong to those of the demoniac nature. We are doing 16.4. Are we at 16? Chapter text number 4. Are we moving on to 5? Is it very clear so far? Yes. So these six demonic qualities. And you can see how systematic this Bhagavad Gita is. Very systematic. And then now we go on to 5, which the theme is like the destiny of the divine and demonic. Uh, those are transcendental qualities are conducive to liberation, whereas the demonic make, the, make for bondage. <coughs> qualities make for bondage. Do not be a certain Pandu. You are born with divine qualities. So the, this theme is called destiny and devour the divine and demonic. So the saintly qualities, what happens? If a person has saintly qualities, he gets liberation. And the demonic qualities is bound in this material world. So Krishna encourages Arjuna, he said that you are born of all saintly qualities and his fighting is not demonic. So in the purport, there's a few points. On what basis Krishna considered Arjuna is born of saintly quality and his fighting is not demonic? What is it? Because Arjuna considers the pros and cons. He's considering it. Uh, and he's considering, you know, like whether respectable people like Bhishma and Drona should be killed or not. So that those are good qualities to have. And to perform the regulative principles of different orders is a transcendental action. Like for a Kshatriya, shooting arrows at the enemy is considered transcendental and not demonic. So therefore, is considered to be saintly, although he's killing. Because he's a Shatriya. You got it? He's performing his duty. Performing his duty. So then we're moving on to six. Six is, again the theme is talking about two kinds of created beings. Divine and demonic. So here, it says there's only two types of people. We think people, we have lots of different types of people. One for is divine and another for is demonic. That's what for that's all. Nothing else. There's only two. You know, you talk about schizophrenia and all these things. Schizophrenia means is either divine or demonic. One of the two. Got it? It's one of the two. So that's what is described here. And in the purport, uh, that's you know, it's a short purport. It's talking about you know following the scriptures, the rules, the regulations. Uh, one should follow the rules and regulations, and obedience to the regulative principles of the scriptures. 
So that's basically text number six. Now we're moving on to the second section, which is from seven to 20. Seven to 20. And from seven to 20, we're gonna deal with the demonic nature. Uh, you know, who's, can, who's a candidate for liberation? We're gonna discuss this. And, and now we're moving on from six, from seven to 20. Uh, and then we'll, you know, Arjuna will be able to see how he's, he himself is free, you know, from demonic tendencies when he's fighting. And text seven is a theme. This verse establishes the demonic nature. Let's look at seven. And seven is talking about those who are demonic do not know what is to be done and what is not to be done. Neither cleanliness nor proper behavior nor truth is found in them. They do not know what is to be done, what is not to be done. They do not follow the scriptures. They are unclean. He neither likes or follows these rules. And people say, what to hell are the rules? These are people in the demonic nature. They are unclean, improper behavior, untruthful, not truthful, self-centered. These are demonic qualities. Now we're talking about this thing. You, you may be evaluating yourself, right? You think, hell, you know what? Some of these things, not lots of these things are for me. <coughs> Get it? So that's take seven. And in the purport, uh, as we mentioned, you, know, you don't know what to be done. You're not following the sastra. You act whimsically according to, you know, against the principles of scriptural rules and regulation, which is set out, you know, for civilized society. They don't know these things. They have no faith in the Vedic injunction the sages, the instructions. And it speaks about, in the end it says there, that Aryans, they are the most advanced civilized people and they adopt the Vedic injunctions as it is. But we see that we don't do these things, right? Unclean, we spoke of unclean. What is unclean? He neither likes not to follow these rules of, what is unclean? So you have external cleanliness. You like brushing, shaving, bathing, and then you have internal cleanliness. So how do you clean the inside? By chanting the Hare Krishna. So your heart becomes cleansed. You cleanse outside with water and right? inside you cleanse with the Hare Krishna mantra. Like improper behavior. And there Prabhupada quotes the Manu Samhita to guide human behavior. Because all you know laws and rules and regulations, like laws of inheritance, are described from the Manu Samhita. It's a law of mankind. That's what it's, Manu Samhita. And the Hindus meant to follow that. They up till now, even in the Supreme Court, they follow this in India. The improper behavior with others, anger, harshness. So that's not good. So, you know, women should, he talks to talk about women should not be given freedom. But that doesn't mean women are not uh, are protect. Women are always protected. They are not exploited in any way. Not as slaves, but as children. You protect them. So, you know, this is a whole topic of women's love now. You know, it's all, you know, like, unfortunately, like, I mean, you saw what Sujal posted one. Yeah. So Priyanka Chopra. Mm -hmm. Priyanka Chopra, did you ever see her with her husband and the child all the time? Mm -hmm. They have such busy lives. Yeah. But how can you do both? Not possible. You can't be a mother and you can't be an actor. Mm -hmm. It's not going to work. You have to take care of your children. See, like Aishwarya Rabha is a very good actress, but she's very close to her daughter. Yeah, she's given up now. She's, well, she's become like an extremely attractive person, mm -hmm. but she knows what the society is about, but she's gone through it. Mm -hmm. Get it? So that's a good thing. And that girl is that girl is growing up, she's growing up with a proper consciousness. She likes her country, she likes her language. Hindi. She learns, she speaks in Hindi. Yeah. So that's what is required. Yeah. So women should be very you know? Nowadays marriage is practically an imagination now. Nowadays they have like living, you live in first and you like work it out. It's going on well when you're married. Mm -hmm. What nonsense is that? 
you illusion. People are illusion. They have no knowledge. They cannot tell that they're heading the wrong way. The illusion. They always. People are full of anxieties because they accept impermanent things. They are attracted to by the impermanent. So they start creating own God, own hymns, all these things. So many people come out of different things. The internet is full of all these things, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, unclean vows, primarily the two things, sex enjoyment and accumulation of wealth. These are like, they're attracted by the impermanent. And engage in like unclean acts, unclean habits. You know, like women, wine, gambling, meat eating. People are going to these places, this is horrible. And they're absorbed in conceit, pride and false prestige. This is what this verse is discussing, text 10. And then they create some false religion, which is not approved, as I said, in, in terms of the Vedic injunctions. And we have many such people, artificial means. You know, they want to be honored, so many different things. They're gliding to hell. That's what they're leading to, the hellish place. So we're speaking about the heavenly, people who are nourishing their divine qualities, they're going to upwards, and the hellish people are going downwards. So 16, 11 and 12, um, um, yeah. 11 and 12, this is again talking about the demonic attitude and engagements. Now there's further description, especially sense gratification is a prime necessity. See that it says a prime necessity for human civilization. Immeasurable anxieties, network of thousands of desires and absorbed in lust and anger. And what are their engagements? Secure money by illegal means for sense gratification. Again, the same theme is here. The goal of life is sense gratification. They don't believe in life after death, the signs of and signs of karma. You know, if their plans are not finished, they want to prolong their life, like a dying man was requesting a physician to prolong his life for four more years. That's not possible. And you perform all kinds of sinful activities unaware of the super soul sitting there as the witness, the Paramatma. The Paramatma is always there. Got his, in that field, he got his uh, video. Yeah. Secure money by illegal means <laughs> for sense gratification. <clears throat> Secure, yeah. No? Feel free to do anything because of ignorance, faithlessness in scriptures, and they're unaware of the super soul as the witness. So this is describing uh, demonic people. So there's two types of people. One is divine, and the other is demonic. demonic. So we're moving on to 13 and 15, 13 to 15. <coughs> now what is the theme here? I won't read the whole verse, but it's very interesting. This, this, this is how the demonic mentality is described. And I'll just sum it up. I am the controller and the enjoyer. What that means? It indicates your false ego which connects to spirit and matter. I am the controller, I am the enjoyer. I am perfect and powerful. So what does that mean? Everything is being done by my potency. Because I am powerful. And everything will increase. My enemies are defeated and I'm happy. Because when you have enemies, you actually want them killed. You don't want their enemies. You see, sometimes you're praying, hey, I hope you die. This is a demonic mentality. We all have done that, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. At some point in our life, right? Mm -hmm. So then, uh, uh, but you know, like we think the demonic is, the, we think of a demonic person as accomplished everything by his own endeavor. This is talking about his own endeavor. Then 16 explains their actual achievement. See, 16 now is talking about what it's talking about. 16 is talking about, in a nutshell, it, you know, the results of the demonic work. I explained in the 16th verse. He's perplexed by various anxieties, network of illusion, too strong attachment to sense enjoyment, and he fall down to hell. That's what happened to him. And then, that in the purport, Srila Prabhupada again talks about the network of illusion is bound up by a network of hundreds and thousands of desires and illusions. And it's compared to like a fish in a net. You know when a fish gets caught in the net, there's no way to come out. So that's how the materialist is. And, and examples of this 
uh, Mohajal or network of illusion. That word is there, it's there, it's given somewhere there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Mohajal. And the net in, in 16, it said, no limits for the desire to enjoy. These are examples now of that illusion. No limits. Always planning to increase the stock of wealth. Always doing that. Things that all his advancement is due to current endeavor and not because of the law of karma. He thinks that he's doing it. It's not based on previous activity. We find many people who don't work hard but are very rich. So how are they rich? So it's not by hard work, it's by the previous karma. Mm -hmm. You get it? Anyone who comes into their competition is his enemy. And then he's talking about Ravan. He was trying to build a staircase in order to go back to the higher planetary by mechanical arrangement. So you're manufacturing your own process of yagya. But we know if you do the certain yagya, then you can go to the heavenly planets. The philosophy is complete, huh? This is really complete. And then in 17, 17, I'll paraphrase it again. This theme now is talking about the 17th one. Demonic, hypocritical nature and preaching, and preachings are describing that. Being self complacent, impudent, and are deluded by wealth and false prestige. They proudly perform sacrifices in name only, without following rules and regulation. Their hypocritical religious observances cannot save them. So in the purple, Prabhupada points out, and we'll go to it quickly, you perform very you know, rich, religious ritual in name only, without even accepting the rules and regulations, because all these things have rules and regulations how you perform. And it's called avini purvakam, you disregard the rules and regulations of the scriptures. You know, you want to collect more wealth, prestige, you take sannyas in a dress code, without following the restriction, you know, the illicit sex. Some take the dress of preachers and become known as religious reformers or incarnations of God. This is all wrong, Avidi Purvi. And you disbelieve in God. And some of the demonic preachings are, and Prabhupada says it in the Prabhupada, preach that whatever path one creates it's, is one's own, one path. There is no standard path. That's bad. Then others concoct their own God. You get that type of people. Then you get some priests that God is dead. Like, you know, there was the subway one time. Who was it? Uh, John Paul Sartre, I think one of the people. You know, he said, somebody wrote, uh, God is dead. Signed, uh, maybe John Paul Sartre, or one some person. And then somebody else came and read, John Paul Sartre is dead, signed God. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so they don't have this thought. So 18. On the 18th text, we're coming close. The theme is demonic, uh, demonic hypocritical nature and preachings are further described here. What we said, spoke about earlier, like the demons, they are envious of God. The saintly persons, the scriptures, they're bewildered by false ego, pride, lust, anger, all these bad qualities. And they become envious of the Supreme Lord. We sit situated in their own bodies and in the body of others. It's in everybody. And what they blaspheme against real religion and are envious of God, saintly persons and the scriptures. This is demonic people. You have this type of people? Yes. And what causes envy? Material assets, so-called prestige, accumulation of wealth, strength, lack of knowledge, does not know that present life is a preparation for the next life. And what's the result of envy? Envious of his own self as well as others. He commit violence on other bodies and on himself. Envious, you know, like we we're speaking about. He put so many arguments, thinks himself independent, powerful in every action. You know, he's strong, strength, but we know that it's just, it's not possible. So then on 19, on 19, 
Now it's talking about the fate of demoniac. What happens? What happens to these type of people? These type of people, they are perpetually cast into various demonic wombs in the ocean of material existence. That is the theme. And in the purport, Srila Prabhupada's right that nothing is accidental. Practical actually, nothing is accidental. Because that particular soul entering the womb is arranged by Krishna. It's by the Supreme Lord. So a demonic person may not agree on the supremacy of the Lord, but his next birth anyway is determined by Krishna. He's put into a particular species of life, lower demonic species of life. And you're going to read more, it's in the third chapter. He doesn't have knowledge that all this is arranged by superior power and it is not accidental. So what is the fate of these demonic people? What happens to them? They're cast into demonic species of life. You see like the many hunters in the jungle, they are demonic species, they kill it and they live like a horrible life. And they continue to be envious and then they are the lowest of mankind, going to have a condition. Then on 20, on text 20, again the theme is about the fate of the demonic. Now it's telling what happens to these people. What's happening to these people? They attain, uh, uh, they glide down to hell, and they attain repeated birth among demonic species. Such persons can never approach me. Gradually they sink down to the most abominable type of existence. So how bad it is. They never attain life after life in this demonic species, like cats, dogs, hogs. And what is the hope for them? These all these type of people going to the lower species. For them it's very difficult to receive God's mercy at any stage of the life. So your, your question may be then what happens? You know, what is the hope? Because God is supposed to be all merciful. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Supreme Lord has no hatred for anyone. So casting them in low forms of life is also His mercy. It's another feature of His mercy. Because sometimes they are killed by the Lord, these lower species of people. And that's how they get liberation, like Ram and Kamsa, etc. Get it? So that is also part of the Lord's mercy. He reciprocates with the consciousness of the living entity. And I don't want to get into that. We can describe a lot. So let's see. Now 21 to 24. We've got the last uh, four verses. Right? Okay. All right, now this is now you have a choice. You either you know go to the supreme their destination or you go to hell. You're getting for getting free from the demo, demonic qualities. Now, this section is dealing with that subject matter. Um, 21, 22, 23, 24. In one hour, we managed to go through it. So, so to achieve, you know, like you know, release from this conditioned life, one must follow the scriptures. And he has to follow the scriptures and he must not be dictated by the lower modes of nature, material modes. Then he can escape. See? So 21 and 22 together. Let's see. Uh, 21 and 22, let's discuss that together. So the common theme here how does one become demonic and get into hellish life? We have dealt with it. In 19 and 20. What are the three gates to hell? Lust, anger, greed. <coughs> and why should one give up these three gates? Why? Because they lead of degradation to the soul. They go down. And by controlling these qualities, one escapes demonic life and attains happiness. So you have the choice to escape this demonic situation. And you can go back to Krishna. So these three gates are very, you know, they are important and it helps us, if we have this understanding, to 
to reach that supreme destination, which we will see in 22. He says, The man who has escaped these three gates of hell, O son of Kunti, he performed acts conducive to self-realization and thus gradually attains the supreme destination. Our Bhagavad Gita is too good, huh? <laughs> it's really good. I mean, really, really good. And in these two verses, it describes, you know, all these demonic qualities that we said, bidding goodwill, begins with lust, anger, greed, that gates to hell, and the extreme danger from these three gates, gates which we, we, we spoke about, the degradation of the soul. But the, this point that Prabhupada made in the purport, basis of the whole method and prescription of Vedic literature, the entire method is based on giving up lust and anger. So we have to give that up. The more one gives up, the more one, the more his existence become pure. Just like when you become celibate, you become very pure. And even when you celebrate, you're not engaging in this activity. You're becoming purer. And then you, you're becoming free from this quality. Then you follow all the rules and regulation and you gradually realize, uh, rise to spiritual realization. So this is the method or is what is prescribed in Vedic literature. And this one could come to the level of Krishna consciousness. So how this Vedic system is practically instituted and Prabhupada writes in the purport in the form of that Varnashram system, which help you the gradual elevation to the highest platform of spiritual realization and then liberation. It's gradual. Yeah, it's very gradual. Then we move on to uh, 23 and 24, which are the last verses. Uh, in 23 and 24, the theme is these two verses establish the importance of the Sastra Gijanu, the importance of the scripture. You need to follow the scriptures to control and regulate it, this, this demonic quality. One must follow scriptural injunction, must follow it for the gradual elevation. And the result of not following the sastras in 23, if a person doesn't follow it, what happens? He disregards, a person who dis, discards the scriptural injunction acts according to his own words, attains neither perfection nor happiness nor the supreme destination. He loses. And then the purport, Srila Prabhupada expands on this few points. He talks about what does the Sastra video refer to? It refers to all direction. Uh, for different paths for spiritual elevation. And everyone is expected to follow this. Everyone. And the purpose of the scriptural rules, it as we said, we have emphasized the gradual elevation to the highest perfectional stage of devotional service and you apply the knowledge, you know the tattva of the Lord, you know the truth, you serve the Lord and you engage in devotional service. These are the purpose of the scriptural rules. Then you move on to meaning of karma, karta, defines acting whimsically. So to act whimsically that is also bad. So one who, one who knowingly violates the rule act in lust and the destination of these people of engaging in whimsical acts, they are condemned according to power by the Supreme Lord and they cannot attain perfection of the human life. So that's there. So it's important as human beings to follow the rules and regulations to purify one existence and to reach that final stage of happiness. So then in the 24th verse, which is the uh, We'll read the last verse. One should therefore understand what is the duty and what is not duty by the regulation of scriptures. Knowing such rules and regulation, one should act so that he may gradually be elevated. He be gradually elevated. The highest perfection of knowledge. And then Prabhupada quotes there, uh, 1515. You know, that his, that verse, Sarvasya Chamiji Sanavish 2. I'm seated in everyone's heart from any kind of remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. By all the Vedas, I am to be known. By all the scriptures, Krishna is to be known. And how to achieve that highest perfection very easily? 
You chant Hare Krishna, you engage in devotional service, eat the remnants of the, of the Lord like prasadam. <coughs> so what, what status one achieved by the above process of devotional service? So one who is understood to have studied all Vedic literature and come to the conclusion perfectly. In the end, you must come to the realization that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And when you come to that understanding, you'll be purified by engagement in devotional service. You'll know what the do's are, what the don'ts are. You follow the rules, you follow the regulations without any alterations. You're following all the rules, the regulation, without any alteration. And the standard, standard of Vedic scriptures, which make them unquestionable, because they are free from these four defects that you know of, of a conditioned soul, <coughs> illusion, mistakes, cheating, like that. There's different, uh, the Vedic scriptures are free from that. If everything is perfect. And then again, he speaks about, there's quite a few points, but then he speaks about the aversion to the principle of understanding the Supreme Person of God is the greatest offense of human life because people they are averse to the Lord so when you are averse to the Lord it causes you fall down in human society and cause of Maya it, you know Maya gets you and you, you go through many miseries that's all that's what happens and the principles of the scriptures are a must to achieve perfectional state we spoke about it both for the personalist Prabhupada says and the impersonal you still follow the scriptures and who is fortunate? The fortunate person who he, he understands the scripture. And we spoke about the defects of the human society, which cause demonic life. In spite of them hearing all these glorifications of the Lord about devotional service, they still manufacture their own way of elevating themselves to the spiritual world. And then it concludes that purport how to elevate and, and why to elevate. How to elevate, that's how it goes. One has to rise at least to the mode of goodness uh, before the path of understanding the Supreme Lord can be opened. One can elevate to the highest stage of guidance of proper and bona, by proper and a bona fide spiritual master. So you need a spiritual master to come out of this illusion of the demonic uh, stage of life and go back to God. It's 1949, exactly the last time we saw it. <laughs> we'll stop here with the 16th chapter. We just tried to overview it, but there's much more information. And in... is it interesting? Yes. Interesting. Find it very interesting. Any questions or comments? Or... Yes. I think the day that I read this part about anger, this is it starts from there. From, from yeah, right from birth. But the soul now doesn't bring that from the previous birth. From the previous. Can be from the previous yeah. birth too. Yeah. So in this birth now, when the soul is in the womb, you say it's adopting the anger and all qualities. From where that comes now? From the parents fighting? Why? Well, whatever the consciousness of the mother is affects the child. Okay, okay. So the mother is eating all, you know, like moods and food in the moods of passion. It's also affecting the child within the womb. And the anger starts because you see some children are very angry and they're fighting at a very early age. Yes. You notice that? I was Where does one it of come them. from? Man? I was one of them. He was one of them, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gone now. No, no, no. It's still there. So what I know what is, what is aggravating it is I'm a driver on the road. Oh, I can tell anybody, you. Anybody who drives is not in the mood of goodness. He's in the mode of passion because driving is not the mode of goodness. I'm telling you, you, you think you can control your anger. No, which I'm sure so you think, kind of things, you know. As soon as you think, what's going Swelling, F's and B's, and you know. Don't take somebody on the back and then come right in front of you and you have to slam your brakes. That's not uh, good, you know. But uh, driving is in the mode of passion. It's not in the mode of goodness. So, uh, while I'm at there, I'm going to ask you something that that's one of the reasons why I'm going to give up for it. But you know what? It's not the main reason. But you've been giving it up for like many years now. No, but you no, haven't no, done no. it yet. This is genuine. This is genuine. Good. Because his voice inside me is asking me this question all the time. Yeah. Do you want to serve your boss or do you want to serve the Lord? Yeah. You 
you want to save the boss, that's it. Oh, no, no, no. By changing now, prove to her wrong. <laughs> prove it to us. I guarantee you. And if you ask me this next year, you'll see. Or maybe you won't ask me because you'll see. Yeah. So I want to ask you, am I taking a shortcut by giving up the world? No, you're supposed, to, it, it, you're supposed to give it up give it up at fifty years, you're older now. You passed your time. You're supposed to be able to give it up fifty. I think I'm 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 for me everything is coming late because yeah. I don't know. I'll tell Prabhu to send her some Hare Krishna mantra and car or uh, USB. Yeah. Let two people swear. <laughs> he knows that. He knows what he's talking about. Yeah. He knows, he knows, he's right. You know, when you have to slam your brakes to prevent an accident, yeah. you know if you had that accident, he was going to. Because he was words you'll speak all the time. That's like high, high, high brutal Sanskrit. <laughs> Not good. And, and I'm driving now for like 50 years now, so... I yeah, think it's conditioned, but you'll come out of it. I think it's... I think yeah. it's, it's Start it's walking a little bit. Do you like walking? Yeah, I like walking. I can walk. Um, walking, running is my thing. You must start walking. Yeah, that's why I want to give up work now. Walk, on, walk on the beach, on the Chant, walk on the beach, it will help you. Yes. Come calmer. Look at this, walk on the beach. So, yeah, please uh, take this seriously. This is demonic quality. We went through all 24 verses in the 16th chapter. In a nutshell, but, but we'll unpack it in our classes. We'll go more deeper into it. Yeah. Any other comments before we close? So thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. We hope you can do this again.